Hi everyone, Dr. Scott here. Today I want to talk to you about the article that you read on the Purdue OWL about writing literature reviews. The article does an excellent job of explaining why literature reviews are so helpful to other researchers and why they're assigned in an, ar an array of disciplines. In this class, we assign a literature review for one of the reasons that's stated in the article. We want you to show that you become familiar with a particular topic. In other classes, you might write a literature review to identify what we call a gap. So you do a bunch of research and you realize that, hey, they're not really addressing, the research really isn't addressing this particular issue. In this class, it's not fair to expect you in the short amount of time that we have to do enough research so that you can identify a gap that other researchers haven't addressed. We do assign a literature review in this class for you to show us that, hey, you've done enough research that you can build an argument for the final assignment in this class, the documented argument. A quick reminder that the literature review needs to be organized by trends that you've identified in the research. The Purdue Al article mentions different options for how you might organize your essay, and there's one that it mentions that will not be a good fit for the literature review that you'll write for English 1105, and that's the chronological approach, kind of the approach that this article was written first, then this article was written, and then this other article was written, just by matter of time. That's not going to work for the literature review that you're going to write for English 1105. You'll want to focus and look closely at the thematic and the methodological approaches that are described in the Purdue OWL article. Those are a much better fit for the literature review that you're going to write. In this video, however, I wanted to explain what a literature review is, and I also wanted to talk to you about a specific example of a literature review that was written by a former student. So a few years back, a student in the radiologic technology program here at SSU, she wrote a literature review about radiation levels and how safe radiation is or is not, and the she wanted to summarize the debate about those radiation levels. So she, she did a ton of research. She asked her faculty and her program for references, for articles that she could take a look at, and I wanted to share with you the literature review that she wrote and the annotated bibliography that she wrote about that topic. So let me switch screens and let's have a look at it. First of all, the student's name is not Joan Jett. Joan Jett is a singer in a rock band from a long time ago. This literature review and annotated bibliography are written in APA format. This is the cover page, and then we have an abstract page, and we have what's called a running head. You'll learn about how to do these all very soon. This writer has chosen to single space her work, and I'm okay with that. Your instructor may have a different opinion, um, and you will want to reach out to your instructor to find out what their requirements are for the literature review and annotated bibliography in terms of formatting. But let's take a closer look at what this student did in her literature review. Again, so we had a cover page and a running, running head on the first page. Then we have an abstract that gives the reader an overview of the literature review. Joan only covered the literature review, but the abstract could also cover the annotated bibliography and briefly describe the different kinds of research that she found. Moving on to the literature review itself, we see how Joan organized her literature review. There's an introduction section that previews the main trends that she identified in the research. Then we also get to the trends themselves. In her essay, Joan used the styles feature in Word to create a table of contents that you can use by clicking the navigation pane and you see these different section headings here. They show up on the left hand side have cl clickable links behind them too. That's a kind of neat feature. And you'll learn how to do this for the documented argument. The sections of the literature review provide a discussion about the trends that Joan found. And she uses paraphrases from her research to provide evidence of the trend. And she comments on what she learned. So she's talking about the research that she identified. There are multiple articles in each section because the trends she identified are found in those different articles. So she only creates a section if she notices that there are multiple articles that are addressing that particular issue. Finally, there's a conclusion section where Joan discusses what she learned and how the literature review has helped her form a research question that she'll take up in the final project for the class, the documented argument. And that's all the way down here at the end. So what Joan did is she read a bunch of articles and she wrote annotated bibliography entries about some of them, and I'll show you you a few of those here in a minute. She read widely about the topic and she asked herself, where are there areas of agreement? Uh, where are there trends or similarities or patterns within the research? Maybe it 
maybe there are common subtopics that people are talking about, talking about within that larger topic that she researched. Maybe it's about the methods that people use to do their research. Uh, maybe one group of researchers did surveys about folks that had just received an x-ray and another researcher conducted an interview. Maybe that's one way to kind of group ideas together. Maybe it's about the research and how it related to specific groups of people. Maybe there was research that was conducted with rural communities and research that was conducted in more urban communities. Maybe it's about the people. Um, maybe uh, folks with particular education levels and how they responded. Um, people from different ages. What I'm getting at here is that you're looking for patterns and you're looking for areas of commonality between your articles. And it might not be just, here's the research about um, only this group of people. It might be, here's all the, here's what we know about these different kinds of groups of people. That might be one trend that you identify in your research. So she identifies trends and she makes those trends her paragraphs of her literature review. She's just kind of describing what she was noticing in the research and the commonalities uh, between the articles that she read. That is the tougher part of writing a literature review is deciding what to group, how to group ideas together into those body paragraphs. I highly recommend reaching out to your instructor or reaching out to a writing center tutor, taking another look at that Purdue OWL article for ideas about how you can group ideas together for your literature review. While we're here, I want to take a quick look at the annotated bibliography that Joan wrote. Um, and I'd like to show you how I go about grading the annotated bibliography in the literature review. Your instructor might have a different process, um, so you'll want to make sure you follow their instructions here. But I want to show you how I look at um, a literature review and annotated bibliography. Here on page six, we have the annotated bibliography. It's alphabetized by the last name of the author or the article title or organizational title if there is no author information. So we have can I avoid because there's no author information. And then we have Cohen and doses because there's no author information. In your literature review or when you use research later in your documented argument, you need to make sure that the name you, your entry starts with becomes what we see in the citation in your essay. Now let me give you an example. So we have Cohen here wrote an article back in 1990 about um, how dangerous is radiation, and it was on this website here. So in the literature review, anytime we see Cohen, it better come up as Cohen and not something else, not like the name of the article or anything like that. That first entry, that first word that's in that entry, needs to be what we see. So here we have Cohen in 1990 in APA format. That's the way that it should be. The annotated bibliography entry summarizes the article, discusses the article's credibility, and it reflects on how the source might be useful for the author's thinking about the topic. So Joan Jett, this fictional student, wrote these annotated bibliography entries, and she's writing about what's happening in the article, what are the major findings in the article. She's also talking a little bit about the source's credibility and how the source can help her with her overall project. Generally, Joan did a decent job on her literature review and her annotated bibliography. And if you click under review and all markup, you'll see the comments that I provided the writer. When I grade the literature review and annotated bibliography, I stick to the rubric for the assignment. I check to make sure all eight sources are academic sources and that there's one, what I'm calling data source. We talked about that earlier this term. When I taught this class, all the articles had to be academic, and I used green highlighting if I thought the article was an academic or expert source, and I used gray highlighting if I thought the article was popular or a non-academic source. You can see that Joan had some work to do in using academic articles. I also choose two annotated bibliography entries, and I skim that source that the writer cites. If the writer missed an important point or seemed to cover just cover information in the abstract, I'll note that information too. I'll note that in my in my feedback. I commented a little on formatting. You can see my comments over here. But I commented a little bit on formatting. You will have instructors that will stress this more than others. For me, it's important to know the basics, but I do not spend much time commenting 
on APA format. So you can see my feedback over here on the right hand side. Again, I pick two articles and I read, I skim those articles, and then I provide feedback on the annotated bibliography entries. So there you have an introduction to the literature review, as well as some information about what the entire assignment looks like, the literature review and the annotated bibliography together. Again, your instructor might have other requirements about what the document should look like and what kind of formatting you use. So you want to make sure that you reach out to them if you have any questions. So again, I hope that was helpful, and I wish you luck as you start putting together your literature review and your annotated bibliography. Bye for now.